I think my intros always start either at a table full of cleaning products or in a room full of beauty products. So I'm at an estate sale. I start in the garage and I'm going through all of the cleaning stuff that they have out here. Those Mir miracle Grow attachments for the hose, those are discontinued. So those always sell and they sell quickly. In the spring, I was getting $25 to $35 for them. Now I'm getting around $20 to $25 for them. But either way, they're a really quick sale. I did find one one that was brand new and it sold for over $45 to somebody in Canada after shipping and taxes and fees he paid over $70 for it now because those are empty I list them in the garden hose attachment category on eBay I don't list them as a fertilizer because again they're empty this Magnolite roaster was in very nice condition but they wanted 60 for it and these ones sell for around a hundred so I felt like that was just way too high and I wasn't going to make enough of a profit off of that. This is my first day back garage sailing and thrifting since taking almost a week off. And I could not find my little thing that goes around my neck to hold my phone for hands-free recording. So I'm holding my phone this entire day. I was so pumped to see this closet was open and that it had all of these products. I go through all of them and I don't even find anything worth really taking the time to stop and look up. I think I looked up one hair product on the top shelf and that was it. That Renew was almost empty. This same thing, it was almost empty. So I didn't look either of those up just because I didn't think it'd be worth it with how light they were and how little was left in the container. And then I spot the Lone Perfume on the shelf in here pick it up and it's Elizabeth Taylor white diamond. So that's also gonna be a no. Always check the bottoms of perfumes and beauty items. They have a lot of information. Usually it'll have what brand name it is, how many ounces, possibly the year it was made, where it was made. So that's why I checked the bottom of that powder, but it was just a no-name brand body powder. So I picked this Febreze to look up just because of how it looks. It looks different than any other Febreze air bottle that I have seen. So I'm going to look that up. That's usually what I do. I'll look through everything and kind of pick and choose some items to look up if I think they could possibly sell or if the labeling looks different. That Goo Gone, I'm picking that up for myself for taking stickers and labels off of things. I can never have too much Goo Gone. I'm also going to look up those two glades just because they look like they're more than likely going to be like a limited edition scent. I just sold a bottle of this countertop magic for I believe it was $30 or $35 and there's two of these. There's one new and one used. So I'm going to go ahead and grab both of those. Now this end dust ended up not being anything but I did pick it up just because it again it was the end dust free but I figured if it didn't sell I could use it at home. And I grabbed that Windex for home use as well. Now I did look this up and it was not worth anything. And don't mind that nasty bruise on my arm. That's from an IV that went bad. 
So you always have to be careful when you're looking up comps. So the comp on this one looks like it's for $18, but it has free shipping. Shipping was probably around six to $7 for that item. So it probably only sells for 10. Oh, yep. This pattern of flatware is called Providence and it's by False Graph. Now, large sets of these are selling for $60 and over, but it has less than a 10% sell through rate. So I decided to leave those behind. Now, I don't think this soap is for sale, but it caught my eye because it's something different and I've never seen it before. I always go through sales twice when I go to estate sales, so this is my second trip around the house. There you go. You bag or you got it? I do. Okay, guys, I spent $9 total. This right here is discontinued and it sells for 52. I scanned it, the last one had sold for 52. These countertop magics, I will lap these together and ask probably 30 to 35 on that. I'll get about 20, somewhere around 20 for that one. This one I'm not too sure. I know the turtle ice is something. I'll look it up, throw up a comp for you guys. I just bought that on a whim. These are for eBay, obviously. The Gooby Gone. I wonder if this. I've never opened. Oh, yeah. No, can't put anything in there. Um, shoot, and that feels kind of like it might be leaking. Ugh. So I think I'm going to leave. I don't know. I'll have to see if I have something in the car. I doubt it. Oh, you know what? I have a box. This I've never seen before. I just grabbed it again. If it doesn't work, I'll just use it. Or if it doesn't sell, I'll just use it at home. I'll throw up a comp. And then this is for at home. We're out of Windex. So instead of going and buying some, that'll hold us over for a while. So let me, I think I have a box. Ugh. Yuck. Yes. Right here. It pays to not clean out your car. So, I'm going to put the Gooby Gone in there, because I don't know if it's leaking or if that cap was just not on right, so we'll find out. Okay, there's three more estate sales in this town and one out of town. This was a really small estate sale. I'd say it was less than 700 square feet. There was no upstairs, no downstairs, just the main level of this really old home. Now I do grab this chapstick, but I grab that for myself because I always lose them. One of the best parts about selling these types of items is usually I'm going through them alone. It's really rare that anybody else is looking through these items. If all of this stuff were to be in a bathroom, I would probably be in that bathroom by myself for most of the time that I was digging. So there could be absolute chaos going on at an estate sale and I'm tucked away in the bathroom away from everything. I was hoping these were goody, but they were unmarked. I took a little while looking to see if I could find some type of maker mark, but there wasn't one. It's really dark in this room as well. Now, other than my chapstick, I did not find anything over there. So I move on into the kitchen. When it comes to flatware, Gibson is usually one of the brands that I just generally skip over. If I see it's a Gibson, I won't even look it up. It's really rare that any of them are worth any money. spot this pyrex eight cup measuring bowl in the corner i figure i'll keep it if it doesn't sell i paid eight dollars for this and i couldn't believe the comps so i'm thinking i'm going to price mine for 
probably $45 or best offer. And I could have bought that crock pot there in the corner and sold it, but I get tired of shipping those crock pots. They're a pain to ship and I'm always afraid that that inside piece is gonna break. So I don't know much about cookbooks, but I do know 10 of them that sell for really good money. So I'm always keeping an eye out for those. And also any like church cookbooks, usually I'll lot those together and sell them for 20 to $30, just depending on how many are in the lot. But I don't see any good ones in this box. Now I do pick up this Velveeta Cheese Keeper and I don't even look it up because I know this one will sell. I sold one years and years ago and it looks like this one is selling for about 15. I really need to brush up on shiny bright ornaments. They had a few. None of them were anything spectacular though. They were mostly just regular bulbs. So I didn't spend the time to look any up and they were kind of damaged. I felt like this was probably somewhere close to eBay pricing on that camcorder. So I did not bother looking that one up. Maybe I should have, but I just didn't feel like wasting my time. Now this Glade Serenity candle, someone's asking 13 for it on eBay, but none have sold, so I went ahead and put this one back as well. I'm always looking for discontinued Yankee candles and tarts, but honestly, these are just single tarts. I would need at least, I'd say six to 10 of them to make it worth my while if they were discontinued. If it wasn't for Pamela in my bolo group, I would have never even known to give these a second look. These are all Martha Stewart living magazines. Now these ones aren't from the 90s, but some are from the earlier 2000s and then all the way up to 2017, I believe are the newer are the newest ones that I purchased. So I pay a dollar a magazine for this and I'm still gonna make quite a bit of money. So what my plan is, is I'm gonna lot these up in four magazines or more and sell these as lots. I will research every single one individually and see if any should be sold individually. And then if I don't have any, again, I'm just gonna lot these up. It was so funny because when she posted about this, I thought, where am I ever going to find Martha Stewart magazines? Who would save magazines? And I should have known better. And this is why it's important to research before you even go to the thrift store or estate sales because yes, you can look things up, but you might walk past something that could have made you a few hundred dollars for the simple fact that you didn't even know that you should have looked it up. That's why I do a lot of research on eBay almost every single night, just looking in different categories for bolos. But this one is definitely all thanks to Pam. So I thought that was it as far as the Martha Stewart magazines went, but I was wrong. So I go into another bedroom and I see this box on the floor. So I go ahead and sit down and start going through it. And wouldn't you know it, I found a whole bunch more of the Martha Stewart magazines. I think I end up purchasing close to 50 of these magazines. My total was $99 for everything that I purchased at this estate sale. And I don't know, I, I accidentally purchased that Oprah magazine and then two other magazines that was a total accident. I don't know how I did that. So I have a couple extras that I'll probably just end up donating or using to start the campfire this summer. And I had a feeling that I was going to find something heavy just because this is my first day back and my back is still really sensitive and I have to be really careful with lifting stuff. So I did get some help to carry all of these magazines out to my car, which was really nice because most estate sales will not help you carry things. 
So I recorded this while I was waiting to check out because I wanted to give you guys a better view of the bulbs that were available at this sale. Again, I really don't know what I'm looking at. This is something that I'm not very well versed in. And I feel like something like this is not something that I could just jump on eBay and look at some comps to decide whether I wanted to buy these or not because I'm sure condition makes a huge difference in this type of thing. So Christmas ornaments, Christmas bulbs will definitely be in my bolo group soon because i will be researching okay, guys they were cutting <clears throat> no deals on this magazines on the magazine so i got the magazines and then i also bought this print i have no idea what it is looked cool picked it up um i paid 99 dollars for all of the magazines these two things of tea that i can sell for a little bit this big pyrex eight cup um i don't know i might keep this for myself we'll see when i get home and then i didn't look this up but i'm gonna assume i can sell it for a little bit this was a dollar maybe get in my mind around 15 to 20 for it i'll throw up a comp though and so that was everything else but on to the next sale um we'll see what's up with these magazines so I can't even tell you guys how nice it was to get back out there, go to some garage sales, some thrift stores, and I went to estate sales all in one day. I was out for seven hours that day at quite a few estate sales. Um, I know I had mentioned there was one out of town, so I drove out of town to that one and I pulled up five minutes before they were closing and they had already shut the house down. So I did miss out on that estate sale, but I did hit up quite a few garage sales um, and also thrift stores that day. So I filled my car. I'll pop up a picture for you guys. My back seat was full, my trunk was full, and I had a couple of things on my passenger seat as well. So because my back was has been out, I am behind on rearranging my space down here, but I will hopefully have that video out for you guys on Thursday. It looked like a tornado went through down here. Since my daughter started working for me, my eBay sales went up almost a hundred percent it was like 96 point something percent so i was struggling to keep up with shipping sourcing and then i give her a list every day of what i need her to do so between making that list making videos editing videos shipping out all of this stuff and then going out to look for new stuff i just kind of like slacked with the basement i never taught her like this is where i keep this stuff and this is where i keep this so she would just get stuff drafted and then just put it in a pile and then I would have to put that stuff where it should go or sometimes stuff was selling from the pile before I could even put it away. So it's still kind of crazy down here. I also purged my inventory. I ended, I want to say it was close to 200 listings and they were all items that had been listed for quite a long time and they were getting no views or items that had been listed, you know, for quite a while with no views. Some stuff it was like eight, nine months, no views. And then some of my stuff I have had up for years. So I used to never end any of my listings. I would leave stuff listed for two years when it sold, it sold. And I'm kind of getting away from that business model. So I'm revamping things completely. Um, we're having a big garage sale. I think in two weeks, we're just kind of, we're at the mercy of the weather. So we always hold the sale at my parents' house and they're kind of, they live on the river so it can't rain because if it rains, the only parking they have is their front yard because of the way their driveway is. So we need it, we need their yard to be dry. So we're at the mercy of the weather. We're hoping we can have the sale, not this weekend, but the next weekend or the weekend after that. I don't know, probably the middle of July. Um, so I still have items I need to pull off my shelves that I've ended on eBay, Mercari, all my platforms, and I need to get that stuff out of here and kind of rearrange my shelves and finish cleaning. When you guys see the video where I start cleaning, you're going to be blown away with how it looks down here, especially with how it's going to end up looking down here because even right now it looks like a million times better and we still have a lot of work to do. 
Okay, so don't forget tomorrow is my very first video in this, I'd say four part series that I'm going to do, just diving deeper into certain topics. Tomorrow is gonna be all about hair tools. That will be out hopefully like around noon tomorrow. And then next week I will be back on my normal schedule. Well, what is supposed to be my normal schedule, Tuesday, Thursday, and Thursday's video will be, no matter how much I get done down here, next Thursday's video will show you all of my space, how I store everything, and just kind of how I do everything because I do things a lot different than most resellers. I keep all of my items open on the shelf. I don't have, I don't do bins, I don't do boxes, I don't do any of that. Um, so it'll be a really good video, like I said, especially just to see the beginning and see how bad it was down here. So I'm gonna end this right here. I did go garage sailing today and I bought some blow molds. So I wanna go outside and hose those off before it starts to rain. But again, I appreciate every single one of you. Thank you so much for watching, liking, commenting, sharing. I appreciate all of it. And I will see you guys tomorrow on my shorter video.